All right, sorry about that. I messed up the video on the last one, so it's going to be part two of sanding down this side of the door. I got a dust mask on now that's going to um, keep some of this dust down. It kind of uh, messes with my sinuses for a few days, so uh, pretty sure it's not good to be breathing it. So dust mask will help a little bit. Gives me a headache the next day if I don't wear one. So we got that on. So like I said, I've just done the five panels, and now I'm going to start at the top. I'm going to do um, this mountain right here. And these two rails on the top, and then we're going to do this rail and this mutton, and then the bottom, and then we're going to do the outside styles. Okay? So. Okay, so let's have a look at that. It's pretty dusty right now. Um, you can see, once again, I just kind of worked this area here um, out to this edge on either side, sorry. Um, and then came down here, worked the middle. I just really should figure out the terminology, but um, worked all of this down through here um, and finally down to the end. And then I came back up this side and then went around to the other side. I also got the sides here too. Um, just knocked those down. So, um, let's see, one of the things I wanted to point out while I was doing that was that in some places you'll end up with dings along the edges here from the years that your doors have been in. If they're new doors, you may not have those, but I got a few of them on here. What I try to do is just um, cheat the sander over the edge on, the, on those a little bit to kind of smooth them out. So if you run the sander from end to end on that, um, it'll tend to make a, there's a ding right here, and it'll tend to smooth that out. Once you get some paint on it, it looks like it's always been there. Um, I don't spend a lot of time... Um, fixing those because it's kind of a pain and they never really come out that good anyway. So, um, yeah, got some holes here. We're going to put uh, some putty over in a little bit. Um, let's get this thing vacuumed off. So the next thing to do, um, I use a shot back here. Get that plugged in. My shot back has one of these little upholstery attachments on it that's um, kind of like a brush. Uh, and that does a pretty good job of getting the dust off the surface. So let me do that real quick.
Okay, so the surface is all vacuumed. I, I think the gray in my hair is not actually dust. It's probably just because my hair is turning gray. Um, but uh, you can see the surface is more roughed up now. Um, it's pretty smooth for the most part. Um, you know, once again, I knocked down these edges over here. Um, at this point, when it's all clean, it's a good opportunity to locate all the dings on the door, anything that needs to be smoothed out. Um, and you can go around and um, knock those things down. This, this door looks pretty good, actually. Um, so I don't think there's going to be a lot to do on this side. This is the back side of the bathroom door, so it didn't get a lot of um, kids kicking it and stuff over the years. Um, so my kids included, they do uh, quite a bit of kicking on doors when they can. So, um, you know, the next thing I'm going to do is just walk around. There's a little ding right there, some holes right here. We're going to fill, um, let me put this back down and we'll, um, fill some holes. Okay. I think you guys could see that. So for filling the holes, I'm just going to use some wood filler. I got some, uh, wood filler there. Um, one thing that can be really annoying is, uh, hold on a sec. If you got a bunch of dunks from the last time you used a putty knife on your wood, uh, on your knife, you, um, want to just clean that off of there. I use a utility knife to clean it off and smooth it out. And just get that cleared off real quick. Um, the way I like to fill holes, just get the putty open. Looks like this, kind of brown. Sometimes it's white, depending on the stuff you get. Um, I like to just mix it up a little bit because it sometimes gets wet on the surface. Give it a little flatten out. Um, scrape over the surface, make sure it's flush, and then just a little press it in there like that. Okay. You leave a little on the surface here, and it'll dry like that, and you can sand it out later. So push it in real good. Um, and you want, like I said, you want to leave a little overflow so you can feather it out. I don't actually like this putty that much. I had some other stuff that I liked better before. This stuff, I bought it because I thought it was the same kind that I had before. Um, I had some other stuff that turns white, um, which is really handy because um, the color of paint that I use is almost the same white, so I don't have to go and repaint holes like if I'm nailing trim back on. Okay, I got another thing to patch over here. A little ding from the door stopper. So if I try to put some putty on it. Don't worry about how smoothed out you get it. You want to just feather it kind of, and you're going to come back later with some sandpaper once that dries um, and get it all fixed up. Littler holes, you can kind of fudge it on. Got one right here. It's a little tiny hole. Just a little slap of stuff on there and rub it out with a finger, and no one will ever even know. Okay, same here, little dings you can just fix and swat holes and things like that, you gotta kinda do a little more work on. Like I said, this door, on this side at least, is looking pretty good. Um, got a little one right there. So one thing I forgot to do was just come and wipe it off with a wet cloth real quick. So let me do that. I'll wipe around the repairs that I just made, but um, it's handy just to get the dust off. You really, um, I spend a lot of time trying to not have dust, so I use tack cloths and things like that. The store's going to get wiped down quite a bit more. But you can just come around. I use just a wet cloth. It's a like a dish cloth with some water on it. It's not too damp. This one's got a little paint residue from last night on it, but I should go mix it out. You can just get some of this dust off of here. Dust is not your friend. Alright, so I'm gonna uh, go rinse this guy out and um, I'll be back in just a sec. Okay, I washed my rag out, uh, so I'm back. Um, I'm just gonna kind of wipe around, want to get the corners inside of these panels really good. Um, once again, I'm just working in the same order I'm gonna work later. I'm gonna do these top panels and these middle panels. And then the bottom panels, and then we're going to paint the bigger surfaces on the door. Um, just a good idea to get into that habit of doing everything in that order so that it um, becomes routine for you. Okay, so get all these panels nice and wiped out. I think these have a little bit of um, drywall dust on them or something. 
we uh, she bought that bathroom. Put them on to make sure we get all that out of there. If you've got an air compressor, you can come along these edges and blow all of that stuff out. Um, if there's any dust left in there, I, I'm not going to do that because it is not that dusty and it's not bugging me that much. So um, just continue to wipe this down though. And get along here. Um, once again, this will get another wipe down before we start primering with a tack rag. So when we come and sand these repairs, it's going to make a dusty mess again. But um, yeah, it's not going to hurt to wipe it off several times. Okay, and don't forget the sides. You can paint the sides as well. Okay, so at this point, you're going to look at the surface, and it's going to seem like you didn't do anything, because once you wet it down, it kind of makes the scratches look like they're not there. Um, but um, when it dries, you can see it's starting to dull up already. So this door is looking pretty good. So the final thing I like to do, um, you know, assuming these repairs are good, and like I said, there's not too many dings on this door, so not much to do on this side. Probably the other side will get some stuff. Um, the last thing I like to do is I like to just put a little bead of caulk all around the... Um, the edges here to, to um, it prevents these panels from moving around on some of my doors. Um, there's a little bit of movement on some of them. And, and it also um, sort of uh, um, rounds out this inside edge a little bit. So I think it makes the paint less likely to cr uh, crack on those edges. Um, and if it cracks, you can go by it back and re caulk it a little bit later. But um, by and large, I've had good success caulking all these joints. So I'm just going to caulk these real quick. Get that aimed there, uh, and I gotta go pop open some new cocks, so I'll be right back. Okay, so um, when you're caulking, I use uh, Alex caulk from DAP, it's just um, latex caulk, it's white. Um, it's about $1.99 a tube, not very expensive. I use it in a pretty standard caulking gun. I think there's some debate raging about you know the quality of caulking guns, but I'm not going to get into that. You want to make sure you have a wet rag because you're going to smooth all this stuff out with your finger. Okay, so let me do the first one here. Get that aimed down. And what I want to do is just hold the caulking gun at kind of a 45 degree angle along this edge. Let me see if I can get a better shot for you. Uh, how's that? Um, and I just put a little bead of caulk along here. You, you want to try not to overstuff this with caulk because it just ends up being a mess if you do. Um, it takes a little finesse to learn how to do. Um, and I'll show it to you after I put the beads on there. Okay. So I've cut the hole at the tip at a 45 degree angle and it's a very, very tiny hole. Um, the smallest I can cut actually because I don't want a lot of caulk spraying out of there. Okay, so right now the caulk is kind of piled up in there. Um, what you want to do, or what I like to do, you can do whatever you want. Um, I like to wet my finger on this towel and just kind of come along and smooth that out. Um, you got to be careful in the corners because it'll pile up, so you want to pull away from the corners initially and then kind of come back and round them out. You can just smooth it out with your finger. The tip of your finger is the best tool for caulk because it's pretty tactile and you know you get good feedback pretty quick. And you always have it with you. Okay. Um, this caulk job, when you put it on, it may look like it's kind of uneven. Like some of it's thicker in other places and some places than others. That's not too much to worry about because once you paint it, it's all going to be the same color. Um, and that'll tend to get hidden. So I've gotten better at caulking over time. So this usually comes out looking okay. Once in a while my daughter likes to come out and help. And uh, her caulk lines are variable. Okay, so let me show you that real quick. It's kind of like what it looks like. Uh, let's see if we can get an extreme close-up. See it's all smoothed out. Um, I don't have too much piled up in the corners. Um, and that'll generally look pretty good. It takes about an hour to dry. I'll do one more for you here and then I'll turn the camera off while I do the rest of them because it's all just the same thing. Okay? So let's try to do that without 
decocking the cock I've already cocked. Alright, here we go. So, just a little bead here. Try not to pile it up in the corners. Um, you, I can tell you that, but you'll do it the first time you try to cock or the first ten times, and then you'll learn. You'll say, you know what? But that guy said to cut the hole small and not spray too much cock, so I'm going to try that. And then you'll be more successful. Okay, so there we go. Got a little bit of caulk on there. Once again, just gonna wet that finger. A little damp with the towel. Roll it along there. A wet towel is your friend in all phases of painting these doors. I um, try to keep a couple around while I'm prepping, obviously. While I'm painting, I've been stealing them out of the house. My wife is like, you seen any of our towels? We buy uh, these bundles of washcloths and uh, you know, I'm draining them out a couple at a time, so probably need to head to the store and get some new ones. I like these washcloths, these Terry washcloths, because um, by the time they get, I tend to try to pick the ones that are the most beat up out of the kitchen, and by the time they're beat up out of the kitchen, they've been washed so many times in the washing machine that um, that there's no lint left on them. Like, the, I don't get anything falling off of these towels, so. Okay, so. There we go on that. That looks pretty good also. Um, and uh, so I'll um, stop the camera here. And that's pretty much the end of the prep uh, for um, each side. So um, uh, before I primer, we'll um, come back and sand this stuff off. So we'll put that in the next video because um, I'm not sure how to restart recording on the end of a video. Maybe if I figure that out, we'll come back and do that. But then I'm going to finish caulking this, flip this door over, do the other side, um, make sure everything looks good, and then stack it up against the wall here, um, and then come back this evening uh, and primer. It's about lunchtime right now, so all this caulk will be dry. Um, these repairs will be dry. They'll be ready to be sanded, um, and uh, we'll get it um, chucked up. Oh, actually, there's one thing I forgot, uh, a very important thing, actually. So... Let's see here. I'll set this camera up here. One thing I like to do, the way I, um, the way I paint both sides of the doors, let's see if we can get this balanced here. The way I do both sides of the door um, is that um, you're not going to paint the top and the bottom of the door. No one sees those things. Um, you can tell that the tops of my doors actually have writing on them from um, when they were sold originally. Um, what I do, actually, I built these fixtures. They look kind of like this. It's a piece of wood with a hole drilled in it, and it's got this big lag bolt sticking out of it. It's a big bolt like you'd put in a gate. Um, and it goes through a hole in here, and uh, it rotates. And the way these get set up, and you'll see this later, but I'm going to draw your attention to it now. I set these up on the edge of my welding table with my saw, kind of like this, and clamp them down. And these, this bolt is at the same height as my... Um, saw horse. So what I like to do is I put a hole, a big hole, like a 3 8 hole, in the center of the top and the center of the bottom. Um, and that gives me a pivot point so that um, I can paint one side of the door, wait a few minutes, and um, the way I normally do it is paint the other door, and then I can come and flip the entire door over and paint the other side. So I don't have to wait for one side to dry before I paint the other. I can paint both sides and um, one session. So, um, let me grab the drill. I'll drill a hole in one side here for you real quick and you can um, try to figure it out on the other side because it's the exact same thing. Um, and then later uh, we'll crank these lag bolts in there and you can see how that works. Okay, so grab the drill and the tape measure. Get ourselves a pencil. And put the drill on. Okay, so you want to be close to the middle. Get the tape measure out. This is a 27 and 3 quarter inch door, so half of that is uh, uh, 13 and 7 eighths. Alright, you calculate that correctly. Wow, look at us. And then these doors are um, about an inch and a quarter thick, so I usually mark it at 5 eighths for the center point. It's not so important, the center point this way. But going this way, you want it to be pretty balanced, otherwise the doors will um, tend to rotate while they're just sitting there. So, 
Got a little mark there. Grab the driller. Put a little hole there. Uh, like that. And then um, I'm using half inch light bolts. I wanted to use the biggest ones I could um, so that A, I wouldn't break them off and B, so that they wouldn't tend to bend while they're holding up these doors. These doors are, um, you know, 50 pounds probably. So I use a big light bolt. So I'm using a 3 8 drill and just drilling a nice fat three inch deep hole in there. Okay. So I got that hole there. And then later, um, when I'm done prepping the other side of the door, we're going to stick this lag bolt in here with this fixture on it and crank it shut. And um, you can't see it now, but you'll see it later. The top of my saw horses have a notch cut for the other bolts. So one bolt is in this side, one in that side, and it becomes um, an axis of rotation for, um, for these doors. So. Um, you know, more about that later. Uh, you know, I ran into the doors tend to drift a little bit while they're sitting on the stand. So, um, you know, on one side, I'll put a couple of um, long wood screws to hold it uh, in place. But um, I'll show you that later when we, um, when we get them up on the stand. So suffice to say, you want to drill a hole like that in each end. Um, I'm going to finish up the caulking here and then um, we'll resume with the sanding uh, in a little bit.